Hi everyone, my name is Solomay Tibabu. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar focused on accelerating growth to your small business. Um, again, Solome here from Main Street Hub, and I'm with Evan Crystal of BizFi, and we're really excited to share this content with you. Uh, here at Main Street Hub, I manage the East Coast Regional Development, where I've got one of the best jobs in the company. I'm in charge of all of our small business educational services, which means I get to work with trade associations and other chambers of commerces and travel to groups all across the country, providing workshops, seminars, and boot camps for their members all about online best practices. This gives me a great opportunity to actually go out and meet with small business owners and give them hands-on training on how to use the internet to reach new customers and to create better relationships with their existing customers. My name is Evan Crystal. I'm. I apologize. Yep, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Evan Crystal, the Vice President of Strategy and Business Development over at BizFi. I wanted to thank you all for coming on and listening to what we have to say today, and hopefully it's really beneficial for you guys and excited for you guys to hear what we have to say. Awesome, and we are just so pleased to have Evan with us. Uh, we're excited about the content that we're going to present here. But um, actually, before we get started, I just want to share a little bit more about Main Street Hub and BizFi and why it is that what we do at each of our companies. Uh, here at Main Street Hub, it's our mission to help local economies thrive, and we do that by supporting those local businesses' online presence. We've been doing that for about five years now, and it's been our pleasure to help local businesses connect with more of their customers by extending their customer service online and helping them spread more word of mouth. We are based here in Austin, Texas and New York City, and we're the only full service do it for you marketing platform that is focused exclusively on small local businesses. This includes restaurants, salons, healthcare and wellness practices, auto dealerships and more. We've helped thousands of these business owners just like you with their online marketing so you can stay focused on running your business. Oh, and we were also just named number 73 on the Inc. 500's list of fastest growing companies in the United States. And with that, I'd love to, for you to hear more about BizFi from Evan now. Hey, everybody again. Evan Crystal with uh, BizFi over here. Um, just a little bit about BizFi and where we started. Um, BizFi grew out of, some, of exceptional technology that was developed by Merchant Cash and Capital, which is founded in 2005. Merchant Cash and Capital started out as a direct lender to small businesses and has originated over $1.2 billion to more than 21,500 small businesses in nearly every industry that you can think of, from restaurants, retail, um, auto repair, trans, uh, transportation, you name it, we have a facility to be able to finance it. Uh, Merchant Cash and Capital is the parent company of BizFi, and BizFi is somewhat of a newer entity of Merchant Cash and Capital, but has the ability to do a plethora of different things. Biz, BizFi offers short-term financing, franchise financing, medium-term loans, equipment financing, all the way out to AR factoring and SBA, and multiple other different financial tools and um, facilities throughout their platform, our platform. BizFi is what you would call an alternative finance company. An alternative finance company is essentially a company that is able to lend to small businesses or just lend in general, but is not backed or through a bank. That gives us some more flexibility, some more efficiencies that I'll get into later on on the webinar, but it differentiates ourselves in a lot of different ways from other financial institutions, as well as becoming the first of its kind in both an aggregation and financing platform. Myself, uh, I've been with the company almost, uh, a little over eight years, started out in the underwriting group, so I've had vast experience speaking to individual small business owners myself, as well as going through the specifics that we will today regarding the best practices and the best ways for small businesses to understand their business and to grow their business. Um, some of the things that you'll learn today um, will be first and foremost financial basics for your small business, being able to understand what your costs are, where you can 
have a little bit better profit margins, how you could do your books a little bit better, um, things of that nature. Uh, social media basics for small businesses, which Stolen Able to speak in depth on and be able to educate you guys on where you should be looking, how you should be looking at things, and the best way to grow your, um, your footprint in the social media space. Um, as well as how to use social media effectively to the best of your abilities, whether you're doing it yourself or you have someone on staff that's going to be doing it and spending time. It's a really important uh, use of time and it really helps you to, to sustain and grow your business. Um, how to spot the right fin financing. There's a lot of companies that are giving financing from a different, either different terms, different rates, different um, types of methods that they would be collecting or giving you the financing, whether it's a line of credit or a longer term financial um, tool. So we'll talk to you about um, understanding those as well. Um, and the finance and social media tools that you will need to grow, whether you've been in business for six months, six years, 20 years, whatever it is, all the things that we'll talk to you about today will help you moving forward. Uh, four keys to growing a small business. Um, now, us here at BizFi, and you know, we've been doing this for a long time under the Merchant Cash and Capital banner, but um, we understand what it is to grow a small business, and we've seen so many different businesses come to us. We've done over $20,000 financial um, advances or um, loans, but we've given almost 40000 um, loans out over our 10 years because we have so many happy customers that are able to get financing the first time for whatever the need may be, whether it's working capital, whether it's a piece of equipment, and then be able to go and look for more money because they see a need. Um, so four keys um, would be bookkeeping and budgeting, uh, cash flow management, a really important tool that you'll need to uh, be really familiar with you know, how, however long you've been in business. Uh, price points and structure. And a really important thing that we feel, never be complacent. Whether you think that your business is where you want it to be, you should always be looking to stay ahead of the curve and understand what's out there from a technology standpoint, from a sales standpoint, and from a accounting standpoint, all, all the things you'll, you'll need to help grow your business. Uh, so bookkeeping and budgeting first and foremost. Um, a lot of people don't have time to be able to, you know, make sure that their books are in order, whether it's you're a, a, a small restaurant and you're really busy during the day and there's not, you're ordering, you know, more food uh, for the next week. You're, you're paying, you know, the electric bill. You're looking to, to open a new location, whatever it may be. We understand small business owners are really busy, so bookkeeping and budgeting is really important. Um, must, you know, you must manage the multiple forms of payment, whether it's cash, check, credit, debit cards, EOL, whatever it is, it's important to understand where the money is coming in and how to budget it. Uh, invest in bookkeeping software. Really important things like QuickBooks, a really great, great tool that you can have. Uh, whether you have a internal um, person on staff that is doing your bookkeeping for you, your you have someone on the uh, a third party who's doing it for you, or you're doing it yourself as a small business owner. It's really important to invest in booking software. It can be really easy for you to put to put the numbers in and understand where your your numbers are at, where as far as costs go. Uh, concerning online invoicing, there's a lot of different companies that will allow you to just put your number uh, your information in. Uh, whether it's Sage, whether it's FreshBooks, there's a lot of accounting software and platforms that will allow online invoicing. Um, it's really important that you're able to look at something and, and see what works for you. Uh, set a budget and track it. Whether you are looking to grow, whether you're, you're sustaining, you know, where you are at the moment, or whether it's your 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 freshly new business, it's really important to set a budget as far as how much money you're going to outlay for the, the day, the week, the month, and track it and stay within it. And if you go beyond that and you you're a little short on capital, that's where BizFi comes in. We'll get into that a little bit later. Cash flow management, again, a lot of these things are intersected and that is really important that you understand where you're going as far as tracking your, your budget and where your money's coming in and going out. Why cash flow is king. And your, your expenses should be relatively fixed, whether it's your how much you're paying for food if you're a restaurant, whether if, it, if you're a retail clothing store, how much you're, you're spending on, how much in the inventory that's coming in, whether it's payroll, whether it's another, you know, an outside resource, whether it's an accountant, whether it's an attorney, whatever it is, project, 
project your expenses daily, weekly, monthly, and then you'll be able to know where your where your shortfalls are going to be, if any. Um, and at and at the same time, allowing to forecast your sales. Um, if you have any issues doing this, talk to your accountant. Whether you have an accountant. If you don't have an accountant, we at BizFi have the ability to facilitate um, an, an accounting partner of ours that has um, over 600,000 accountants on staff. That is a, a great partner of ours that we can facilitate a conversation with. Um, the first consultation is free. Um, or if you have someone on staff or you're doing it yourself, just be really cognizant of projecting your expenses, forecasting from your sales. Price points and structure. Again, this is all intertwining. Uh, know your total cost for each product and service. Um, it's, it's important that you don't just assume or you're not paying attention to what market trends are doing and that you know what each product should cost and you're not paying too much for it. Also be cognizant of knowing what your competitors' prices are. I know it's not that easy to do, uh, whether you, you know, but if you're in the same business, you're going to know the relative markup. Most of the time, whatever your product or service is going to be, whether you're doing it internally or you're getting the product in a wholesale manner from another company, you're going to know what the prices are going to be and what your prices should be that you're charging to your customers so that you're within your competitors, um, you know what your competitors are doing as well. Um, and that will you that way you'll be able to know what you can add to the basic price and that your markup is solid you're making a healthy margin but at the same time you know that your customers are happy and, and you're not charging them too much um, and analyzing sales by price again all intertwining knowing the price points and structure of what you're charging and what you can charge and what makes sense as far as from a profit standpoint And never be complacent, kind of a motto we have over here at BizFi, um, whether it's our own business looking to help the small business customer or whether it's a small business customer themselves, keeping, again, keeping your eye on your competitors, knowing what they're charging, knowing what's going on in the market, whether if something's going to be coming down the pipe where you know, clothing from this area is going to be too much or you see that you know that the price of flour is going up so that maybe your price is going to go up or maybe it goes in the other way and you'll be able to lower your prices. Um, you know, by tracking market trends. New technology is coming out every day, whether it's online invoicing for accounting purposes, whether it's social media trends, whether it's um, a new way, a new internal CRM if, if from a sales perspective. Learn the new technology that's coming out there, understand it, and be able to then see if it works for your company. Uh, value each customer. We value each customer that we have. You 100% value each customer you have. Make sure that's always on, in the back of your mind whenever you're dealing with um, any customer that you may have. And never be complacent is right, and that couldn't be more relevant for small businesses when it comes to marketing as well. And so now I just would like to segue into online marketing, which has proliferated in incredible ways, even in just the last few years. And so I'd like to emphasize how some of the largest social media and review sites have a huge impact on every industry. We ask friends on Facebook for suggestions on what to see in a new city. We search TripAdvisor to determine the best place to stay. We tweet updates and check in at landmarks along the way. The modern consumer leaves a digital trail of all that we do, including their opinions of where they're getting their business needs met or unmet. It's also very important for business operators to hone in on marketing on the right websites, because here at Main Street Hub, we call these customer review sites transactional websites. That's because you can guarantee that the people who are going to these review sites are logging on with an intent to buy. They're not just spending a whole afternoon reading random reviews just for fun. They're actually shopping around for business services and products, products ready to spend money. Uh, as you can see here, starting with customer review sites, with over 138 million users per month, Yelp is the most predominant customer review site and most downloaded customer review mobile app. Google is also a customer review site. A whopping 400 million users can now read ratings and reviews about your brand with a simple search. As you can try out on your own, when you go Google your business, you'll notice that Google Maps comes up and then you'll perhaps see a little red balloon with your business name. Right underneath there are now ratings and reviews. So lots of visibility for where your customers are finding out about what other people are saying about your business online. 
Social media sites like Facebook and Twitter not only play a large role in discovery, but their sheer mass alone is such that you cannot ignore them if you want to stay competitive in this market. With the opportunity for real-time engagement with new or potential customers, these are still the most crucial platforms for your business's online marketing strategy. Yeah, as you can see here, I've also included on this list check-in apps like Foursquare, where users can spread the word about your business to their friends each time that they check in to your physical location. Also, as you see here on your screen, consumers take these sites very seriously. Seven out of ten consumers rank searching the web as their first go-to when finding out, finding out about which business they'll spend their money with. Social media, and more specifically today, local social marketing, has rapidly become one of the most important topics for small businesses, with visits from consumers now more than ever, as we'll see soon. So it's really important that you are representing your business on these sites as well as possible. When it comes to these sites, um, particularly Facebook, Twitter, uh, the influence of our peers is so important. 80% of consumers say they'll try something based on what their friends are saying and recommending online. And for those sites which do have customer review functionality, which now Facebook also does, 81% of consumers say it's important for business owners to respond to reviews. That is the majority. That means the majority of consumers already have in their mind an expectation of you as the business owner for how you should be conducting yourself on these review sites. Have you been responding to each one of these reviews? If you haven't been involved with your reviews online at this point, that's okay. We'll talk about what you can do to get started right away. The first thing we're gonna do is claim our profiles. Uh, one thing that I'd like to mention about customer review sites in particular is that most consumers view these review sites not as advertising, but rather a place where they, think, where they can get the objective insider feedback about your business from their peers. So they view the information from these sites as more credible. And so it's even more important that you, as the business owner, become a part of that conversation. Uh, the good news is that these sites offer tons of opportunity and tools for you to leverage to draw awareness and new customers to your business. Among the activities that you can do on sites like Yelp include replying to commenters and reviews. Uh, that way you can demonstrate excellent customer service. You can run promotions where consumers are already reading about your brand. And you can help encourage clients to spread more word of mouth about your business to their friends by consistently staying on top of mind uh, by sharing links on social media through these review sites. So the first thing that we're going to do to start taking charge of your reputation online is to go claim your pages. It's free. So first to claim your Google Plus business page, you're going to search for the phrase Google My Business, or as you can see, there's that URL here as well. Um, there, you'll see that big blue button, get on Google, and you'll be taken through some basic steps to claim your business page. For Yelp, you'll head, head over to this URL, biz.yelp.com, Again, that's biz.yelp.com, and you'll have the opportunity to search for your business among a list and then claim your listing. Uh, for each of these sites, it'll only take a couple minutes to set up and, and have your account active. Once you go to these sites and claim your pages, you'll want to fill out your profiles completely. This includes laying out all the details that you would want a potential customer to actually read and find out about your business. Here's an example of a business that I'd consider going to if I were to stumble across their profile online. You can see they have a lot of feedback from their customers, a filled out profile so I know where they are, photos that showcase their business that make me feel a little more comfortable about what I'll expect before I drive over. Um, and not only is the quality of their reviews high, a perfect five stars, but as you can see here, the quantity of reviews is also high, nearly 200 reviews. Consumers are savvy and they'll be checking those numbers, including how frequently those reviews were posted. Okay, so let's say now that you've claimed your profiles, you've cleaned them up, posted all of your best photos and, and specials and whatnot, 
uh, now now that we have our cleaned up profiles let's let's consider what we're going to do when we start facing reviews uh, here's a question i get very often is i solo may i'm getting a negative review you know should i respond to it how should i address this well facing negative reviews and responding to them can be daunting especially to many small business owners of course this is your baby you've worked very hard to build up your brand and the key to responding to negative reviews is to acknowledge the reviewer and just to take that initiative to address their concern. First, apologize to the reviewer without ever placing blame on anyone, include your, including yourself or the guest. Make sure to demonstrate excellent customer service by responding to their comments in a respectful and timely manner. More often than not, as you can see in this example here, this sort of action will elicit a pleased response from the initial reviewer. Here's an example of someone who wrote a, a mediocre review, you know, three stars. That's not the end of the world, but it's certainly not the best. We have pretty high standards here. Um, and so it, it was also accompanied with photos and a lengthy description of why this customer wasn't super thrilled. However, as you can see here, promptly and respectfully, the business replied with a courteous and detailed response, signed the business owner. This owner reassured him that this was a hiccup that they really take seriously and that they were appreciative of his feedback and look forward to serving him better in the future. Oh, by the way, this was actually us here at Main Street Hub responding to the review on behalf of the business owner. But anything that I say in this presentation is something you can do for free at home on your own time. The reviewer, in turn, was so moved by this initiative that he went back and not only gave them a second try, but also adapted his review to be a glowing five stars. He reaffirmed all that the owner wrote in her response for the consumers that will be reading this time and again as it's posted on this website indefinitely for the public to see. Keep in mind that this isn't just about changing the mind of the specific reviewer. It's about the thousands of other potential customers that will be visiting your page. They are carefully observing how you conduct yourself online, and these reviews are an excellent opportunity for you to demonstrate that sort of customer service for all of those onlookers to see. In addition to responding to negative reviews, it's also important to address positive reviews. Responding to positive reviews will only improve your online reputation, and they'll be used to encourage more word of mouth. Uh, the way that I would approach this is to be sure to thank each of your positive reviewers publicly, although don't use any canned messages over and over again. That's almost more harm than good. You may find many opportunities to cross-promote your other social pro profiles when you respond to positive reviews. For example, if someone writes you a great review, well, here's an opportunity for them to invite them to also like you on Facebook and then continue the conversation here, just as Brett, this business owner, did in response to Ariel. She wrote a, a growing, uh, excuse me, a glowing review. And then boom, P.S. Keep in touch. Like us on Facebook. Speaking of which, here's another example of a business that was posting great content online when one of their fans Michael decided to share his excitement uh, for his first time dining with them. The restaurant general manager, Peter, as you can see below, thanked him promptly, but also notice here, there's another great opportunity to invite that diner to like them on Facebook. So I included that link near the bottom. Then boom, the customer was so moved by this interaction, he went over to Facebook and not only started following their page by becoming a fan, he also wrote another five-star review for everyone to now see on yet another social media site, as you can see in the screenshot in the foreground. This stuff really matters. You just need to know how to take advantage of each opportunity. Okay, so I have been mentioning Facebook several times now. Let's talk about some basic points that you can implement as soon as we're done with this webinar. When devising content for your Facebook page, keep this in mind. The goal is to increase engagement by sharing interesting, funny, and relevant content. You want to use a variety of posts that will educate your fans and keep them engaged on a consistent basis, all while sharing that content with their friends. This is what is going to further expand your brand online to reach new customers that wouldn't have otherwise known about you before. 
Here's an example of a business profile that's done a great job of leveraging all of the all that Facebook has to offer when engaging fans online. We can see here that they have a healthy and growing fan base, and they do that by consistently offering great content for their users and cross promoting their pages on the other platforms like we just saw before. Like I mentioned earlier, they're also encouraging users to write reviews wherever they can. Over time, the higher quantity of these reviews, and of course, five-star reviews, will only improve their reputation online to drive more business offline. Finally, we're motivated customers to check in. Each time a follower of this business checks in to their location, all of their friends get to read about this business and potentially learn about the great experience that their friend had. This is how we can leverage that peer influence, get in front of our fans' friends to expand our reach and grow our customer base. Also remember to use images with your posts. Facebook posts that use photos end up having a whopping 44% higher engagement rate than posts that don't, so use them more often than not. When considering the variety of posts that you can implement, they can include pop culture references, you can ask your fans uh, questions, have a Q&A session you, with your own hashtag. You can run contests. Any of these are okay, just so long as it stays within the bounds of your brand's voice. Twitter, also a behemoth social media platform, has over 50, 5,700 tweets being published every second. Twitter is great for creating interactions with customers in real time. These interactions can happen a couple ways. Some of these include giving customers a pleasant surprise by saying thanks to them publicly. It can also mean reaching new people in real time, inviting them to your uh, physical location. You can communicate relevant business updates, integrate Twitter with your Facebook and website, and all sorts of other offline um, marketing tactics. When you're getting started with Twitter, Make sure that your username is the same as your business name. If you use anything else, it's only going to make it more challenging for your customers to try to find you online and, and follow you. So we don't want to do that. We want to make it as easy as possible for fans to follow us. And uh, when creating content for Twitter, use the same voice as you do with other social media platforms. If you're funny and lighthearted on Facebook, it's important to use that same sense of humor on Twitter for brand consistency. You may also use pop, popular hashtags to get your Twitter posts to show up in feeds everywhere where consumers are searching for that particular category of content or information. Um, popular examples may be, um, as you can see here, this is a, a self-defense organization, so surely they're using the self-defense hashtag. If you have a trade show or conference going on in your community and you are a part of that, yeah, of course, using their sponsored hashtag often gets in front of new customers, too. With our Hub Targeter technology here at Main Street Hub, we're actually able to find out who's in your geographic location and who's also talking about things that your company sells. For example, someone in your neighborhood tweets about trying to find tacos in New York City when you happen to be a great Mexican, Mexican restaurant right in Midtown. Our technology scans thousands of relevant keywords that customers are tweeting nearby you, and then we actually reach out to that customer and write a customized message to invite them to your restaurant or whatever business it may be, just as they are tweeting about looking for somewhere to eat right in the neighborhood. Really interesting stuff, patent pending over here. We're able to get in front of new, new guests that wouldn't have otherwise found out about you, but now are becoming real customers. Um, okay, so that's just a little advanced information. We've talked about a lot of stuff today. But in this webinar, we've talked about claiming and getting active on our customer review site profiles. We've considered strategies for integrating social media sites. And of course, we need to make sure we're maintaining all of these sites on a regular basis for those sorts of excellent results over time. After going through all of this content, many of you may be thinking to yourselves, all of this is starting to look like a full-time job. Let's just look here at how much time a successful uh, social media and reputation management campaign may take. 
Here, when it comes to maintenance, it's crucial that you're scouring these review sites for new reviews on a daily basis. After all, this is your brand online and you've worked hard to build it up and it's important to respond to these reviews in a timely manner. You'll need to respond to each review, both positive and negative. In addition to this, be sure to run regular promotions on these sites to get the full benefits of what they have to offer. You can target different audiences at different times of the year by using the promotional tools that many of these websites offer for free, but that of course is gonna take another couple hours here and there, and then occasionally you may need to remember to update your business information, like phone numbers and seasonal hours and whatnot. So that's just a portion of, of what's going into being successful online. If we wanna go from becoming the business owner who can definitively say, Yes, I know that my time and resources going toward marketing are bringing me a positive return on investment month after month. Well, obviously it's gonna take a lot of time to do this and get those kinds of results. Even just a few minutes of stopping what you're doing, heading over to the computer to make some updates for a few minutes per day starts adding up quickly. As you can see here, yeah, even the basics we've covered today can eventually add up to nearly 50 to 75 hours each month. Many business operators don't have that kind of time to add an additional 50 to 75 hours per month onto their existing work, and so they've turned to us to help them bring their business to the next level. With that, I'm happy to say we're pretty proud of our results. For our customers, we do everything from creating the content on these social media profiles, devising and running promotions, as well as monitoring their review site profiles 24 seven and promptly and thoughtfully responding to each and every review. Within the first 90 days, most of our customers are able to increase their Yelp traffic by 43% and increase Facebook fans by 259%. The thing that really stands out to me is this Facebook word of mouth. Within the first 90 days, most businesses are seeing an increase of 353%. That's 353% more people who are talking about your business online. If you fast forward 180 days, now we're looking at almost twice that in word of mouth. And what this translates into is more people talking about your business, more people coming into your business, and more regular guests over time. Um, no matter which direction you go, there are a lot of options out there for where you can get your marketing done. Uh, make sure you have a plan to measure the results of whoever's doing that marketing for you. A lot of different things going on. It's going to be important to be able to track that ROI, whoever you're giving your resources to. At Main Street Hub, we give you your own dashboard so you can track the work that we're doing and see the results you're getting in real time, both detailed reports as well as simple summaries. Costs for this type of online marketing, the marketing uh, in the market today, can r range wildly. Uh, this includes everything from the $10 an hour intern to thousands of dollars to an independent, uh, thousands of dollars for an independent PR consultant. Uh, while many small business owners don't want to trust that their entire brand to just an intern, just a couple hours a month, nor is the thousands of dollars per month for an experienced PR consultant within reach for many small business owners, you have some options in the middle as well. At Main Street Hub, you have the benefit of working with an organization that has the manpower, the scalable technology, and the experience to make it possible for you to get everything I've talked about today and more for around the $400 a month range. And speaking of money, while we're on the more affordable end of marketing costs, small businesses need money for plenty of other things. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Evan to share more about financing your business intelligently. Thank you, Solomé. That was that was great. You know, being able to learn all about that stuff as far as from the social media standpoint, and as Solomé mentioned, capital is is key in a small business's life. Whether it is the initial capital to start the business, whether it is for growth opportunities for a new location or piece of inventory, whatever it is, or for help on the, from an advertising and marketing standpoint, and, and using Main Street Hub is a great tool there. So we spoke about the four keys to growing a small business earlier in bookkeeping and budgeting, cash flow management, price points and structure, and one of the main mantras we have, never be complacent. And now we get to BizFi. So as we discussed earlier, 
you know, this, you know, BizFi is our platform. It's our financing and aggregation platform, the first of its kind. And it allows a customer, a small business owner, to come onto the platform, fill out some pieces of information, on a little bit of personal information, a little bit of business information, you know, your, you know where the business is, type of industry it is, uh, type of entity, et cetera, some financial information. Um, and it gives you an opportunity of giving an instant pre-approval on the spot from several accredited financial institutions, which includes our parent, Merchant Cash and Capital. Um, it allows you to go in and see what you're qualified for and allows you to then go and compare the results of each type of financing to, to each other. And we have a financing concierge that is with you the entire way. So the initial application, you can be speaking to someone via chat or on the phone whichever you're more comfortable with, or you're gonna, you can speak to them after you're done going through the website, filling out the application, and allows you to upload the documentation as required by each lender, and to get an instant pre-approval and get the financing within hours sometimes, sometimes a couple of days, or depending on the type of financing you're looking for, um, up to a week or two. So what kind of financing do you need? So BizFi's products are vast. We have several different lenders in each of these financing buckets. So we have invoice financing for you know accounts receivable if you're uh, if you're business to business where you have other businesses that owe you money or it could be um, customers, individuals, but that, that's going to be far and few between. Uh, we have SBA lo loans that are available to you from five to ten years. Short term financing in the three to twenty four month um, range which allows you to get short shorter term financing if you're freezer broke if you have some sort of, some sort of need that is needed to needed to capitalize on some financing initially as opposed to waiting a few weeks or months or whatever it may have you if you're going to go traditional route to a bank medical and, and physician financing which is specific to that field line of credit equipment financing franchise financing for franchisees and medium term loans in 2 to 5 year range Going a little bit deeper, we have specificities on financing amount, the time that it will take you for the financing, the estimated length that you have, and the payment frequency. So as you can see, depending on the type of financing is going to dictate how much money you can get in that bucket, how long it will take you to get the financing. As you can see, short-term financing can happen within a day. Um, equipment financing may take a few days. Uh, SBA loan could take a couple of weeks. Uh, it really depends on each lender and the type of financing you're getting, and they all range. So we go as low as three thousand dollars, and we go as high as a million dollars, depending on the type of financing. Um, and the terms range from three months to ten years, and everywhere in between. And we have several different lenders in each bucket, so you're not you don't have one option in each bucket. You have several options. And then you have the repayment frequency, depending on the type of financing. It could be daily, it could be weekly, it could be monthly. It really depends. And so with our financing concierge, our sales team will help you ask you questions and have you educated on all the different financing tools that we have available to you so you can make the best decision for your business. So let's say you have an opportunity. Uh, a piece of machine of machinery is forty thousand dollars typically, but you can get it for twenty thousand dollars because it's at auction, or you're just getting a really good deal from a friend of yours that is needs to sell it. Maybe they're going out of business, whatever it is. But you don't have this the initial funds. You didn't budget, as we talked about before. You know, there's unforeseen things that you didn't you didn't think that you're going to get a forty thousand piece of machinery for twenty thousand dollars, and th and that difference allows you to do the same amount of work that a forty thousand dollar machine would do, but for twenty. So you're essentially saving twenty thousand dollars. The, co the, the cost of the financing is going to cost you 5000 but even then you're still going to save $15,000. These are the type of opportunities that come up that you don't think about and you can't plan for, even if you're taking the right steps in your small business, that somewhat like BizFi can come in and be able to give you the, the capital there through one of through either our direct lending arm in Merchant Cash and Capital or one of our other 30-plus lenders that we have on our platform. Who can fund you? Now, there's several different places that you can go for financing. And a lot of people don't understand the differences or don't know what is available to them. You can go to a bank. You know, the first thing that people think of, I'm going to go to a bank, I'm going to get a line of credit. I'm going to get 
you know, a, a five-year loan, a 10-year loan, whatever it is. Uh, the banks will have the lowest rates that are available. There's no question about it. And, and at BizFi, we're very transparent. But it's a longer process. It's more documentation. It's more questions. It's just a longer approval and financing process. And it just, you know, frankly, takes too long in this day and age. A credit union is going to be very similar to a bank in the rates. Maybe it's going to be a little bit higher, but at the same time, from the documentation standpoint, it's going to be longer. Um, but a lot of credit unions aren't going to give you the certain type of financing you may need if you're not a member. Peer-to-peer -peer lenders, uh, a lot of peer-to-peer -peer lenders that you may have seen that is growing business, you know, in, in this country as as is alternative finance. Uh, generally, not for business. It's more on the consumer side, um, you know. We, and actually, BizFi has the ability to facilitate um, some facilities that, let's say, you're a startup or you don't or you're in business for a short period of time. Maybe a small business loan is not available to you because you need to be more established. But we can facilitate some other financing options that aren't readily available to you, and that's something that BizFi can facilitate. Crowdfunding. So crowdfunding is a new thing that that is also a growing business uh, in this country. A lot of companies have come out and, and are able to give you to the crowd. So if you're looking for five fifty thousand dollars for a new piece of equipment or to expand or whatever it is. And multiple different individual people, whether it's an institutional investors or just any anybody off the street can put money towards your fifty thousand dollars. But the but the unfortunate thing about those situations is not every single piece of financing or capital gets fully funded. More than half fail to fund because they can't get fifty thousand dollars total in the in the term that you want and the rate that you want, et cetera. So unfortunately it's not always the best uh, situation for you and, and unfortunately over half failed fund. Alternative finance, which BizFi facilitates um, on an everyday basis and just a really growing you know space. Uh, fast approval process, we can get you approved instantaneously, financing within hours, could be days, could be weeks, but it only depends on the the type of financing you're looking for as well as um, the type of lender you're looking for. But again, through BizFi, you're able to apply online. You're able to get the approval online right then and there, speak to a, a, an experienced salesperson, and upload all the documentation that you need so it's an easy, seam, easy seamless process. Um, another common thread that we see over here at BizFi is expansion. You're looking to expand. You're really successful in your first location but you need to uh, you need some capital to, to open a second one. Um, the potential profit, you've, you've done a proper business plan, you've budgeted it out, and you think that you can make $50,000. So an option could be short-term financing or a term loan. Um, typically, you know, for that amount of money, the cost would be around $7,500. So you deduct that from the potential profit, and you'll still net $42,500. And had that second location, be able to sustain and grow that. And, you know, BizFi is... is has the ability to then go and facilitate financing again when you need it, as well as being able to you, you start that second location. And if you need to grow your social pr footprint, Main Street Hub is there for you as well. The difference between online financing and traditional financing. Um, online funders are available 24-7, 365. We're here at BizFi, we have people on standby. They're able to take a call whenever you need it if you have a question about if you have, if you're in the process of getting financing through BizFi and you want, you have a question about where you stand, what the status is, you can always log on and check where your status is. You can always call and talk to somebody. We're able to do it in in a online manner. So at any time, so if it's three o'clock in the morning, you want to apply for financing, you can apply for financing and get an approval, upload your documentation, and and go from there. It's a really easy and seamless thing that is never off. Um, again, going back to online financing and funders need less documentation than banks. Unfortunately, we're able to grow and help grow a small business because we need less documentation from you individually, whether we're able to gather it um, in, other, in other forms that you don't have to go and get it. Um, you know, we have integrations um, through software that can get, get us bank statements with the small business owner's approval, of course, um, or other information that you, know, you don't want to be fishing through your, your filing cabinet looking for old bank statements or tax returns or what have you. Online financing makes it easier and more seamless. Um, online funders have staff to answer questions like traditional banks. Um, you know, from, from, a, from a standpoint of knowledge, we, we have the knowledge and the, the length in our business that we've been around over 10 years and one of the pioneers in this alternative finance space. That we can answer any and all questions you may have. Um, we have the same level of information security. We go by the same standards that banks do as far as 
protecting your privacy, protecting the information and documentation you provide to us. We take that very seriously over at BizFi. Um, online funders can pre-approve immediately and fund within days and sometimes hours. Like I've like stated before, we have the ability to do things in a quicker and more efficient manner, and it is something that we really pride ourselves on. Um, just a, an example of, of a satisfied customer, we needed access to capital very quickly in order to secure our second location, BizFi Help. We're really in the business of being able to do this. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier that I ran the underwriting group here for many years, so I have a lot of experience speaking to individuals uh, about their financing, but specifically on a renewal basis. I also ran the renewal team and still handled the renewal sales team, our internal sales team here, and speak to small business owners and see how it works. And it really helps that we're always there for them. If they have if anything happens in their business, they call one of our reps, and we're there for them and be able to facilitate financing, whether it is an immediate or long-term need. You know, we're here for them. Thanks, Evan, and everyone here attending today. Now we're going to move on to some Q&A. While we answer some of your questions, we've got a little bit of time, I'd like you to uh, kindly ask that each of you participate in a quick poll that's going to show up on your screen momentarily. Um, two questions about Main Street Hub and BizFi. As soon as you see it, please click yes or no while we answer some of your questions. So you should see that shortly. Um, in the meantime, I'll go ahead and see if we have any questions. You can type that in your chat box here. Um, let's see, Sue. Let's see, what Sue is asking. Um, what if we are just starting to control my Yelp page? I've had some reviews from two years ago. Should I bother responding to those, or should I just focus on replying to those new ones from here on out? Great question, Sue. When it comes to dealing with past reviews, I'd absolutely go back and respond to them. Again, I really want to emphasize that this isn't only about changing the mind of the specific reviewer per se, but really think about all of the thousands of other shoppers who are reading your Yelp page online. Using those past reviews to show how you conduct yourself and really share your values is a great opportunity for you to further convince shoppers in the future that you are, in fact, the place that they want to do business with. So really great question. Um, we're just waiting for a couple more people to uh, click either yes or no on the poll. Almost there. Okay, looks like we got 100% on that first one. I'm going to go ahead and close it, launch the next one while we take a couple more of your questions. Um, let's see. Evan, I think this one may be for you. At least I think it is. You could probably answer it a little better. Um, sure. how, how can you approve me for a loan when the bank won't? That's a great question. Um, so the thing about BizFi and our ability to approve is that we have a plethora of different financing options. So a bank has their standards and they look at an applicant and they say, okay, it has to meet X, Y, and Z. And that's just one lender's opinion. Here at BizFi, we have over 30. So if one lender says no or one financial institution says no, another one may say yes. And the ability of our team internally is that we're able to kind of screen each lender that comes onto our platform and through my underwriting background and a couple of other our team members underwriting background, we understand every lender's credit box and so that we are going to put a small business owner's application through and understand what fits their box the best and we on a very, very high basis are able to get an approval from one of our lenders because we're not just one, we're 30 plus. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great information. Um, it looks like we're just a couple minutes over our time today. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, here is both of our contact information on this page. If you'd like to reach out and, and get some information or, or have some more of your questions answered, please feel free to, to reach out to either Evan or myself for our respective organizations. And thank you again for taking the time to join us today. Really looking forward to connecting with you after the webinar. And of course, follow us on Twitter and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Take care.